morning students. A warm welcome to our English class of today. How are you students? Doing fine. Spending your days in a useful manner. Yes. I hope you are spending the days very usefully preparing your lessons and learning to live with Corona. Right. In the previous class, we have been learning about the status of Tamil as a classical language. And uh, this author, George L. Hart, gives a vivid picture why, how English could be called as a uh, classical language. And he has learned so many languages and he made a comparative study of our language Tamil with the other languages and he came to a conclusion that we could call English consider English as a classical language, right? Now today we can continue that lesson. In page number 143 we are, so in the first reason why he considers Tamil as a classical language is its antiquity, its oldness, ancientness. Right. The second reason he says it has a vast literary tradition. Right. Unlike the other languages, it has a vast literary tradition from Sangam anthologies on words till today. Right. Very great epics, Tirukural on its credit, and so many uh, vast uh, literature it has. For its great. So you can say that we can say that it is a classical language. Right? In page number 143, the second paragraph I'm reading. Second, Tamil constitutes the only literary tradition in indigenous to India. So this Tamil has a literary tradition which is pertaining to which is native of India. It has not borrowed any words from any of the languages. Solely independent. That is not derived from Sanskrit. It is not uh, derived from Sanskrit. Most of the languages has its basement based on the Sanskrit language. But it has no... Um, that it has not borrowed any words from other Sanskrit. Indeed, its literature arose before the influence of Sanskrit in the south became strong. So before the arrival of Sanskrit itself, it has a vast literature with a literary tradition of its own. Our own tradition it has. That is mainly just brought out in its literature. And so it's qualitatively different from in anything we have in Sanskrit or other Indian languages. So we can very sure we can be sure that it has not borrowed any words from any of the languages, and it is very it is a strong language in India. It has its own poetic theory, its own grammatical tradition, its own aesthetics, and above all, a large body of literature. That is unique, quite unique. It has its own peculiarity. It shows a sort of Indian sensibility that is quite different from anything in Sanskrit or other Indian languages. And it contains its own extremely rich and vast intellectual tradition. Now next, the third reason he says, thirdly, the quality of classical Tamil literature is such that it is fit to stand beside the great literatures of Sanskrit, Greek, Latin, Chinese, Persian and Arabic. So it can stand 
equal with the other great literature uh, languages of the world like sanskrit greek latin chinese persian and arabic languages so it is fit to stand with the other languages of the ancient languages of the world the subtlety the distinctive quality and its profundity that is its sophistication its solidity and of its works they are very scope tamil is the only pre modern indian literature to treat the subaltern extensively and their universality qualify tamil to stand as one of the greatest classical traditions and literatures of the world so it is the only pre modern indian literature is a old language it can stand with all sanskrit greek latin and other persian languages everyone knows that tirukkural one of the world's greatest works on ethics the best example for it is you can say the tirukkural one of the one of the world's greatest works on ethics what is ethics moral principles i told you already it has answers for almost all the questions that a human being faces in his life just like our bible and maybe the other holy books merely one of the so greatest works on ethics but this is merely one of the myriad of major and extremely varied works that comprises the tamil classical tradition right it is indefinite indefinitely great in number we have answers for all the questions of the world there is a not a facet of human existence that is not explored and illuminated by this great literature by this great literature here the other refers to tirukkural there is the human values are brought out highlighted in this tirukkural and he says that there is not a feature there is not a character of human existence that is all the problems that a human being faces in his life that is not explored that is not just uh, investigated by tiruvalluvar in his tirukkural and illuminated by this great literature all the questions of the modern and olden times that man faces is explored and answers are given very clearly in tiruvallur so really we have to feel proud of our tiruvallur and tiruvallur so the third reason he says is it has is it is fit to stand with the other major languages of the world the next reason and he cited the tirukkural as an example for it finally tamil is one of the primary independent sources of modern indian culture and tradition so tamil is one of the independent source it has not borrowed the culture and the tradition from other languages so one of the major independent source of modern indian culture and tradition how proud we have to be right but how we are proud about our language we are very shy to call our parents appa amma appa mummy daddy mama mom chitti chitta what the very good terms we have to call our relations right and like uncle aunty mummy daddy all these things right but we people feel proud to call us mummy and daddy rather than appa loving from this right so it has a independent culture and tradition i have written extensively on the influence of a southern tradition on the sanskrit poetic tradition 
I have already written another one book, in another book about the influence of a sans of southern tradition on the Sanskrit poetic tradition. I have written a book on it. But equally important, the great sacred works of Tamil Hinduism, beginning with the Sangam anthologies, have undergirded the development of modern Hinduism. Their ideas were taken into Bhagavad Purana and the other texts in Telugu and Kannada as well as Sanskrit. So it followed the, the Telugu, Kannada and Sanskrit followed Tamil for its for its more ethical, moral values. It got ideas from Tamil. Their ideas were taken into Bhagavad Purana and other texts, Telugu and Kannada as well as Sanskrit. Once they spread all over India, Tamil has its own works that are considered to be as sacred as the Vedas and that are recited alongside. So, it is considered as a sacred thing and it is recited when people recite Vedas and other sacred. Vedas and that are recited alongside Vedic mantras in the great Vaishnava temples of South India. And just as Sanskrit is the source of modern Indo-Aryan languages, classical Tamil is the source language of modern Tamil and Malayalam. Just like Sanskrit is the source of modern India, Indian Indo-Aryan languages, Indo-European languages, Classical Tamil is the source language of modern Tamil and Malayalam. If you learn Malayalam, Tamil, you could very well understand Malayalam. So, most of the words has its basement on Tamil. Most of the Malayalam words are taken from our Tamil language. Just like Sanskrit is the source of modern Indo-European languages, our Tamil is the source language of the Malayalam language. As Sanskrit is the most conservative and least changed of the Indo-Aryan Indo languages, Tamil is the most conservative of the Dravidian language. Conservative, traditional, traditional of the Dravidian languages. And touchstone that linguistics must consult to understand the nature and development of the Dravidians. Uh, so, from that, uh, we could understand a lot from the Dravidian culture and Dravidian uh, development from our Tamil language. And here I told you what is that Tamil chair on that day. That is, do you know there is a Tamil chair? What is Tamil chair? I told you it is uh, set up in. Um, universities to to just uh, impart Tamil languages and language and uh, its vast literature to the people of the world especially in universities and uh, to establish a Tamil chair um, 40 crore rupees were spent by our people in Harvard University. Right. I am well aware of the richness of the modern Indian languages. So, since he has learnt uh, many languages, he knows the richness of the modern Indian languages. This George L. Hart learnt much about the Indian languages. He knows that the richness of the languages. I know that they are among the most fertile and productive languages on earth. So, compared to the other languages, the Indian languages are more fertile than the other languages. Each having begotten a modern literature that can stand with any of the major literatures of the world. Yet, none of them is classical language. So, he says that there are so many languages and literature that can stand with any of the major literatures of the world. There are so many languages, so many works on literature 
which can stand with the major languages of the world major literature of the world yet none of them is a classical language it is very sure that you cannot call any of the indian that none of these languages as classical language like english and the other modern languages of europe with the exception of greek they rose on pre existing tradition rather late and developed in the second <coughs> millennium in the first uh, or second introductory class of our online class i told you the basement basement of uh, in, uh, english right i just borrowed words from almost all the languages of the world i said so here he quotes that like english and other modern languages of the world europe maybe except greek they rose on pre existing tradition <coughs> unlike the tamil all these languages has its basement on pre existing tradition rather late and developed in the second millennium so they have developed late unlike our tamil our tamil as a uh, the poet says kalthondi mantonda kalathu it has its own tradition it has its own culture it has its own values it has its own literature right he quotes that unlike uh, the other languages english and the other modern languages of europe it has its own tradition that languages has its pre exist that uh, has its Uh, stand on the pre-existing traditions. Hope you understand, students. Next paragraph: To qualify as a classical tradition, a language must fit several criteria. So, to consider a language as a classical language, it has to fulfill certain criteria. It should be ancient. The first thing is, as I said, antiquity. it should be an independent tradition it must have an independent tradition of its own not have its um, development growth on somebody other way, languages basement it should be an independent tradition and uh, that arose mostly on its own not as an offshoot not as an outgrowth of some other tradition and it must have a large and extremely rich body of ancient literature it must have a vast literature of its own unlike the other modern lang- languages of india tamil meets each of these requirements unlike the other modern languages of india tamil meets all the fulfills all these characteristics it has its own antiquity it has a vast tradition and um, it is it can be considered as a it can stand with the other great literatures of the world languages of the world it has its own unique characteristics it is extremely old as old as latin and older than arabic father says that our language is uh, fulfills all the requirements that is to be needed to consider as a classical language and he says it is as old as latin it is a uh, old like latin older than arabic language it arose as an entirely independent tradition with almost no influence from sanskrit or other languages of india so it has its own tradition it has its own words not borrowed from other languages with almost no influence from sanskrit or other languages of india and its ancient literature is indescribably vast and rich the ancient literatures of literature of tamil the works which is written by indian writers tamil writers 
very rich and it is very vast. One example is our Sangha mythologies, Pattapattu, our Natchinai, our Tirukural, all these things. The status of Tamil as one of the greatest classical languages of the world is something that is patently obvious to anyone who knows the subject. So that Tamil can be considered as a classical language is a fact that is known to everyone very obviously, very clearly. One who knows the subject, one who knows the language, will surely say that, say that it can be considered as a classical language. To deny that Tamil is a classical language is to deny a vital and central part of the greatness and richness of the Indian culture. If you deny that Tamil is a classical language, we are denying the greatness and richness of the Indian culture, the old culture of India. So our Indian culture, the Tamil language contributes a lot to the Indian culture. So we must feel proud to say that we are Indians. There are a lot of literature with a lot of ancient, with a ancient culture and tradition, we have our own language to feel proud of. So, we feel proud to say that it is a, um, it is a classical language, old language, Kaltonda Kalatu Tondia language and we must feel proud to pronounce the Tamil words in our day-to-day -day life rather than pronouncing English words, right? You may say that on that day you told us that you, you talk in English. That is, that is you talk in English, especially when you are in, um, in the school campus and with your friends and uh, that circle. You talk in English and improve your English. That is very much essential. But don't give up our tradition and culture that we have. We must stand on our culture and tradition and get the new things which we could acquire from other languages to improve ourselves. That is, that is quite needed and you can do that rather than giving up the Tamil language and its tradition completely going to the foreign culture and tradition is not at all advisable. Right. Now there is one do you know BC in page number 145. BC stands for before Christ and represents the year before Christ was born. AD stands for Anno Domini, which is Latin for the year of our Lord. The year of our Lord, that is the meaning of Anno Domini. And represents the years after Christ was born. So before Christ was born, we say it as BC. And the next one AD, that is Anno Domini, the meaning of it is year of the Lord. BCE stands for before common era, before Christian era or before current era and represents the time before the last 2018 years at the time this was written. CE stands for common era, Christian era, current era. BC and but BC and BCE represent the same time frame, but with BCE, the religious aspe aspect is removed. The same goes for AD and CE. The religious aspect is removed with CE. So learn this uh, abbreviations. Since it is a book back thing, they may ask this. So, now come to the, read the glossary and understand the meanings. And one uh, class test, very soon you may get one class test. I don't know whether you have got the information. And uh, for that, uh, the portion is, except the first unit, what is completed. What is completed is uh, included for the test. Prepare yourself, students. And uh, not uh, grammatical things, only the textual things is asked in this test. Meanings, opposites. Who said this to who? And uh, appreciation questions from poem, and uh, ERC from poem, and all these things. 
right now come to the exercise part of it analogy vocabulary area that is page number 147 what is analogy a comparison of one thing with another thing that has similar feature is known as analogy that is comparison of one thing with another thing of the same feature which has a that has a same feature is called analogy in an analogy the last two words must be related in the same manner in which the first two are related joyous example is given joyous unhappy meaning hopeful despondent unhappy is the antonym of joyous so is despondent is the antonym of hopeful appreciation adulation felicitation congratulation adulation is the synonym of appreciation similarly congratulation is the synonym of felicitation here are some analogies formed with words selected from the lesson you have just read now complete each analogy with appropriate words from the list given below changeable nuance refusal drastic indifference insignificant long established hide classical traditional ancient long established right it long established unique opposite common sensibility indifference indigenous native extreme drastic facet aspect subtlety hide sacred irrelevant irreverent conservative changeable what is that obvious doubtful vital insignificant next one influence impact denial refuse synonym illuminate darken explore nuance next suffixes in the letter of professor george l hart we come across the words linguistics and aesthetics the suffix ics means pertaining to or relating to the word linguistics means the scientific study of a language linguistics means scientific study of a language similarly some words ending in ics is given you have to match it with a meanings given in the other side <coughs> so i'm reading this one match the ics words with appropriate meanings you can make use of the dictionary if you need linguistics numismatics electrodynamics phonetics aesthetics genetics statistics politics aeronautics informatics the other side the science scientific study of a language the study of principles of beauty the study of speech sounds the study of genes the study of analyzing information shown in numbers the study of government and using power in public life the study of building and flying aircraft the study of money and coins the study of processing data for storage and retrieval the study of the way that electric currents and magnetic fields affect each other linguistics as it is said already the scientific study of a language numismatics study of money and coins electrodynamics study of the way that electric currents and magnetic fields affect each other phonetics i told you already what is phonetics 
the study of speech sounds aesthetics the study of principles of beauty genetics study of genes statistics the study of analyzing information shown in numbers politics the study of government and using power in public life aeronautics the study of building and flying aircraft informatics the study of processing data for storage and retrieval here they may ask this in that first 20 questions that one word area they may ask what is called aesthetics and they may give the option unless you study the know this you cannot be you may not be able to answer so read it understand it homonyms homophones and go homograph right what is homonyms right we will see the remaining in the next class okay children till then